Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farmer's Dynasty. We are just finishing off ploughing this field, so I finished the first half of this field. We've just got the second half to do. We're not going to plough the other field this week, much as the game would like us to, because quite frankly I've had enough of ploughing. We're getting hungry, and that might actually explain why I can't see any new quests on the map. Uh, yeah, I'm 45. So we'll finish the ploughing, and at the moment the only two new quests that, well the only two quests I can see on the map are a ploughing one down by the mill that was there available in yesterday's episode, and another one up in the town, or right next to town, the church next to town. Uh, that one was again a ploughing quest. I don't really want to do a ploughing quest. I, I really, really don't. I, I can't begin to describe just how badly I don't want to do ploughing quests. It's bad enough having to do our ploughing here. We will eventually plough that other field over there, um, but we're not going to plough the big field that we own. We're going to just cultivate that one, because I figure that it's going to be a lot faster if we only cultivate rather than doing the ploughing as well. Um, it does specifically say when we start that uh, you do get a reduction in the amount of crop that you will get, but how much reduction I don't actually know, so I, I'm quite interested to find out. I figure that it could sort of be a, a worthy... A, a worthy sacrifice to make, just to sort of, uh, in, in the name of scientific research, so that we can find out exactly what's what with the situation. Uh, unfortunately, this game is still unavailable on Steam. Um, there is still the legal issues that they're having trouble with, uh, so yeah, we, we, we can't really do a lot about that. But um, I will keep you updated as and when I hear anything new. Um, when that will be, at <laughs> the moment I really don't know. The, it, they do seem to be having quite a few issues. Like I said last week, um, they nothing happened until right at the very last minute, and then the same person put in another claim against them, um, and so then there's got to be another... I think it's three weeks that it has to go. I think it's 21 days. I mean, I could be wrong on that. It might only be 14 days. But yeah, they, they waited until the very last minute, and then they put in a second claim against them, um, which meant that it did have to continue on even longer. Uh, so what will happen after that, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And then when we do, when eventually I do find out anything more, I will obviously, I will keep you updated. Uh, there hasn't been any further updates since yesterday. Obviously we have the, there's the new tractor been added into the game. There is the strawberries and mushrooms that you can now find in the wild and you can pick them. They're usually in the long grasses in amongst the trees. Usually, but not always. It did specifically say that. And they are quite difficult to spot. Um, there's a uh, some adjustments have been made to handling of this tractor while ploughing, which I'm noticing now as I'm going along. I'm not having to fight it so much as I'm... Uh, well, I'm not having to fight it at all, really. As I'm going along doing the ploughing, it just drives in the direction that I've pointed it at. It's not constantly trying to slide into the ditch on the side. Um, even if I drive it how you're supposed to drive it with the wheel actually in the ditch, it's still not... The front wheel is... It's, it's kind of trying to a little bit but nowhere near as much as it was i'm not having to fight it anywhere near as badly as i was um but obviously with the way that the plowing works in this game we don't actually need to drive right in the ditch we can drive a little bit off to the side which does make it a little bit easier and a little bit faster to do the plowing um there was the yeah so there's a new tractor there's a new um modern uh, baler it's still small bales we don't have any big bales introduced into the game yet i don't know if there's going to be I was told that uh, modding will be coming into the game in 2018. I think I may have mentioned that already. So there's that to look forward to as well. Once we've done this job, we are just going to run over and check the greenhouse because I forgot to check the greenhouse um, on yesterday's episode when uh, after we slept the night. Um, so we want to check the greenhouse and make sure that our plants over there aren't ready to pick yet. And Because uh, the tomatoes aren't going to be... I don't think the tomatoes are going to be far off being ready to pick. The, there's others in... I think... What do we get? We've got... Um, cucumbers, I think. I don't know if it was cucumbers or something else. Um, maybe in courgettes. I honestly can't remember now. But anyway, we did. We definitely put something else in there. And those aren't going to be ready for a little while. But the tomatoes, I feel, will be ready fairly soon. So we, we'll, um, we'll go and take a look at those in a minute. And then I'm thinking that we will probably... I'm actually thinking that we'll probably go and sleep the night. Because then we can see if we get any new quests. I'd really like to go and do a repair quest for somebody. And, you know, actually do some repairing work rather than just, like, um, running up to the building saying, oh, it's done, and then running back to them and grabbing three points and money. Now, one last little bit here to bounce through, and it is, it's quite rough, this field. It really is. I'm bouncing around an awful lot. But we've just got this one tiny bit there. There we go. Job done. All finished. Right, excellent. 
So we'll go racing off of here, off the side. And, I mean, we can cultivate that field as well. That, it's not going to take very long at all to do the cultivating, actually. So we could do that. If I bring... I'm going to put the plough right back here under the tree so it's, it's more out of the way. So if I put it there, lower it down, and take it off. And then I'll come over here and we'll get the cultivator on so that it is ready to roll. And then we will just run over and we'll check the greenhouse. Um, stop right there. Uh, jump off. I don't like that you can't switch the engine off on the vehicle when you're sat on the vehicle. That's, that is one thing that I'm not particularly keen on. Right, so yeah, we've got the plow quest up there near the church, and then we've got another plow quest down there by the mill. There are no other plow quests. We've got the cedar down there that we're going to have to go and get some point fairly soon. We'll have to run all the way down through here and grab it. Uh, and, oh, and then we've got our machine over there. We've got the corn header, and our combine is up over there. So, I mean, we don't actually need the corn header yet. That's not something we've had to worry about. But first of all, let's go and check the greenhouse. Those plants are getting bigger. Those plants are definitely getting bigger. Ooh. I tell you what. They're going to be ready to pick very soon. See? They're, the tomatoes are actually growing. They're not, they're not ripe yet. They're, they're not quite ripe yet, but they will be soon. So we will, we will keep a close eye on those. Let me just come out of here and... Right, what time are we now? It's only half past one. Right, if I... Let's have, let's have a bit uh, to eat first. We'll eat those mushrooms that we found. Wild mushrooms. And we will also eat some eggs. Go like that, all the way up so I can... We'll take condition all the way up to 100. And then we'll check the map again and we'll see if any new quests have come up. Oops. Well, I didn't mean to do that. I definitely didn't mean to do that. Let me just go back to here and... Right, there are no new quests. No new quests have come up. So I'm going to go back over to here and I'm going to jump back to the farm. Um, it's a very disjointed way of doing it. It does sort of see, kind, kind, kind of throws you a little bit, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, as it's only half past one, I figure if we go and do the cultivating quickly, and, ah, you get rid of the really rough, uneven texture on the field. If you just, like, disappear out of the way, uh, so that the game then has to reload the field. It's not ideal, this is, you know, it's obviously not the best way to go about doing things, but it's certainly a, a way to, seriously? Deer, right there, running right through my farm. I can shoot that thing, and then we could carve it up, and we could have venison stew for tea. I really want some venison stew, and you know, some some venison steaks, and and some venison, and then we could sell the hide as well. We could make a fortune out of that deer. We really could. We could make an absolute fortune out of it. Anyway, we'll ignore the fortune to be made from the deer at the moment, and we will cultivate this field. So you can see where we spread the slurry around the edge of the field. I think that slurry spreading would actually work better on this kind of surface. If we were to come over the field after we've ploughed it, but before we cultivate it, I think that might actually work a bit better. You could definitely see it a lot easier as you were working your way through it. You'd be able to easily see where you'd been and where you still had to go. Because we were, you know, after we'd sort of done a bit around the edge, we were kind of guessing. There was a lot of guesswork involved with um, taking it any further. Uh, we still got quite rough, uneven ground here in places from the ploughing, but it's mostly levelled itself out. And it, I guess that it kind of just, over time, it will level itself out a little bit more. And then um, by the time you, you leave it, you go away and you sleep at night or something, or you, you know, reload the game or something, um, then it'll all come back and it'll all be really, really good. I tell you what, it's not a bad way to spend an afternoon working on an old tractor like this in the sunlight. Not too hot. You, don't, you Obviously, you don't want blazing sun. You don't want blazing heat. That's, that's really bad. We, we don't like blazing heat. Um, but we do like gentle sunshine. You know, so, so it's, it's relaxing sunshine and a, a cool breeze blowing over it as well just to keep things going quite nicely. Um, the fumes from the tractor are then like going up over your head and you don't have to worry about them going in your face. And it's, it's not a bad job. The smell of the freshly cultivated earth is actually quite nice. It's quite pleasant. Altogether, this is not a bad way to spend an afternoon. Having done this myself, um, I, I can vouch for this. And I've done it on an, a, a small open cab tractor as well as in a huge great big tractor. I've, when you're doing it in a great big tractor and you're spending 14 hours a day doing the cultivating, it tends to lose some of its... Um, uh, what's the word? Romanticism, I suppose. It's, it's, it, you, you, people have a tendency to traditional farming or older farming from, say, 60, 70 years ago or older. They tend to romanticize the whole job an awful lot. 
Um, you, you do forget that there's, it's not actually very often that you get the ideal conditions. More often than not, the bloke that sat there has actually got a piece of hose pipe and he's stuck it over the end of the exhaust and then he's run it up his trouser leg because he's so, so bitterly cold and there is an icy arctic blast going through that his six coats that he's got on is not keeping him warm. And so what he's done is he's then taken that, um, the exhaust fumes and he's stuck them up his trouser leg to try to thaw out his leg a little bit and then every 20 or every like 5, 10 minutes or so he takes the hose pipe out and he sticks it in the other trouser leg instead of the first one or he might stick it up one of his arms um, and he does this in a vain desperate attempt to try and keep himself warm just a little bit longer at least like try and stave off the frostbite that's the reality of it um, and you very very occasionally you'll get an afternoon like we have here nice sunshine you can wear it you can wear a shirt you, you're not having to wear 22 layers of um, thermals and still f feel freezing cold um, and yeah it's it's altogether quite pleasant but the, the reality is it's not this pleasant very often more often than not there is something out there that is causing it to be rather unpleasant personally I didn't like it when it was absolutely blazing sunshine because I burn to a crisp I go like a beetroot at just the thought of sunlight um, so yeah, sunlight was never really my friend. I used to prefer working on a cloudy day. Um, the downside of a cloudy day is as soon as you get a stiff breeze, it starts to get really, really cold. So if you're working in an open cab tractor like this one, well, no, you know, no cab at all, um, it, it does get bitterly, bitterly cold. And um, yeah, so you, you, the balance there is not great. Then of course you could have um, reasonable sunlight, but then you also then start to get insects. And you can get all sorts of nasty insects turn up, depending where you're working. Now, we're working quite close to a lake over there. You see that pond over there? Looks wonderful, doesn't it? All that, that, all that water there. Later in the evening, you know, sort of uh, four or five o'clock, well, in, later in the afternoon, early evening, four or five o'clock, as, as it starts to cool just a little bit more, you know, after, after the warmth of the day, the midges will arise from the lake. And they may be present during the day a bit more as well anyway, but uh, not, not necessarily so much. But no, then they, they rise up from the lake and they spread out across the land in a dark and hungry cloud. Now a midge, for those of you who don't know, is a fly. It's a very, very, very tiny fly. It's about the size of a full stop. Very, very small. And some of them, some varieties, are just tiresome, just bothersome. They, they, they just you know, hang around you in a cloud and they're, they're, they're very annoying. Some of them though, um, they, they don't just hang around you in a cloud. Some of them, some of the midges are biting ones and they have a very high pitched whine. Um, if you've ever heard, for those of you who do actually know what a mosquito sounds like, a midge sounds like a mosquito on speed, right? It, it sounds like the mosquito has gone and taken a load of meth and um, and it's wound itself up by several gears. So the, the high-pitched whine of the mosquito has gone up several more notches to become the midge. And these things will chase you down and bite you mercilessly. And they do bite and they do hurt. And there are literally million, billions of them. They, they go up in clouds, vast, vast clouds. And um, yeah, it, it, all together, it's, it's, it's not entirely pleasant. It really isn't. This is not the most pleasant experience in the world dealing with clouds of midges. Now, very often, you, most places, you don't actually get billions in thick clouds. You just get a thin spread of them. You can always hear them whining around, and they're always nibbling at you. Um, it's just kind of part of the background noise in certain places of the world. Um, Scotland, in particular, is quite known for its midges. They, they never tell you about the midges in Scotland. They, they never tell you that the, the place is riddled with biting flies. Um, it's great. Now, I, I spent a lot of my life in the UK. Uh, well, a lot of my time growing up, I uh, lived on the moors. And moorland is very similar to the highlands of Scotland, and we had midges. We, we had lo lots and lots of midges. They, they, fortunately, most of them were the, the varieties that didn't bite. They were just a nuisance. They just they buzzed around you all the time. They kept landing on you, and they would crawl all over you, and, and, and they just itch. It's horrible. Um, but at least they didn't bite so much. You would still get the biting ones every now and then. Um, and so, yeah, you, you, you see this wonderful, idyllic, beautiful setting that we've got right here. Well, actually, beneath the, um, uh, beneath the beautiful exterior, there is a cold, dark secret lurking in the lake over there. And that is the clouds of biting insects. And then, of course, you've got the sun, the merciless, 
evil sun beating down on us, burning us to a crisp. And if we didn't have the sun, then of course we've got the midges. You know, the, the midges, they, they don't tend to come out in the height of summer, they tend to come out when it's cooler. So you, either the, the really hot sun or the midges. You know, which one do you want? Take the pick. Or else it gets really cold. If it's too cold for the midges and it's too cold for the sunlight, then you've reached the point where you're taking the hose pipe uh, with you out into the field. You're sticking it over the top of the exhaust pipe and you're running it up your trouser leg in a vain attempt to try and keep warm. Um, am I persuading many of you to give up your comfortable office jobs or your comfortable school careers and take up a job farming now? Um, probably not. This is why... I like old tractors, but if I actually have to drive a tractor for any length of time, I like the new ones that have things like a sealed air-conditioned cab. Because it shelters me from the sunlight, it keeps me warm when the cold wind doth blow, and it keeps the midges out. You don't have the midges. The midges cannot get into your cab. If you can't get particles of chemicals getting in from your spraying because you've got a filtration system on, those midges don't stand a chance. They will never reach you. It's wonderful. It's absolutely amazing. And the other reason that I've always been incredibly grateful for the whole sealed unit with the air conditioning, um, I have on more than one occasion stirred up a wasp's nest with tractor. And when you stir up a wasp's nest with tractor, the wasps don't just kind of say, oh, I say, what, I say, old chap, um, I, I'm not really overly pleased about you disturbing my home, but I'll let you go with a warning. You don't get any of that. There, there, there is no warnings. There is nothing but unadulterated, fiery death for everybody involved. Um, wasps and you, they, they will descend on you. They absolutely do. They descend on you and they will obliterate you. They are merciless. Um, but, of course, if you've got the sealed cab, you just see these wasps all over your cab window. And there's the, it's fine. If you were sitting on one of these tractors and your wheel went into a football-sized wasp nest... It's possible that it's the last thing you would ever do. It is entirely possible that it's the last thing you'd ever do. And if it wasn't the last thing that you ever did, it would certainly be a painful experience. I can vouch for that. I've only been stung like a couple of times, uh, but I have seen the wasp nests, and I have seen the wasps explode in a thick cloud out of the ruined wasp nest and go absolutely berserk. And they're, in, they're insane. It's like, it is genuinely frightening to see it because you think that, you know, if the window was open, it would be a, it'd be a whole different story. It's, it, it is quite sort of frightening. I, I gotta be able to say, I'm genuine, I'm not ashamed in the slightest to say that I am terrified of the, th the thought of accidentally ripping open a large wasp nest when I'm not sat inside a protective cab environment. That genuinely makes... I, I would genuinely get scared at the thought of that. That that would be quite horrific to experience. Um, it's not something that I would want to do. It's not something that I have on my to-do list. It's definitely something I have on my to-avoid list. Now, I did once disturb a wasp nest while I was driving a low door, and I had the top door open. I managed to haul it closed pretty quick, and two wasps got inside with me. I managed to dispatch them before... Oh, no, I don't actually want to go there. I want to go inside this thing. I managed to dispatch said wasps before they could do me any damage. So I was very, very fortunate that I noticed it in time and managed to close that door. Because as soon as that door closed, I got the two wasps in there with me, and actually I managed to get rid of the rest of the wasps. They weren't happy because the man on the baler had already gone through and destroyed their home. So another machine came along. They weren't waiting around, and they attacked my machine with gusto. They absolutely launched a full-on frenzied attack. It was just insane. It was just... They absolutely went nuts for it. it was really, really badly. Um, I got quite sort of concerned that they were going to find a way inside my machine. Fortunately, they didn't. They did not manage to find a way inside. I've only got 1,500 kilos left in here. We're going to take this one load here, if I can out and round um, but yeah fortunately I was able to uh, shut the door before they really noticed me I was able to notice them fast enough and then I decided to do what anybody else would have done in my situation I decided to take one for the team so I took my load all and I absolutely smashed all remains of this wasp nest and it turned out to be bigger than I thought because I was looking at it from the top down it looked like it was kind of a half a football shape. Uh, this I'm talking about a soccer ball for those of you in the States. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, what we call a football here in the UK, you would call it a soccer ball. You know, the round one, not, not the rugby ball shaped one that you use for American football. Um, 
So yeah, it's, it's the, the round ball, like half a football. And it sort of looked like it was that and then had been stuck up above the ground a little bit. So when the guy had gone over it with the baler, he'd like ripped open the top. So I got my spike and um, my, my um, yeah, my bale spike and I just kind of ran it through it a little bit. Turned out that it was actually quite a bit bigger than that and it went down nearly a foot into the ground. It was absolutely huge, right? It, you, you probably... It, yeah, it, I, I dread to think how many wasps were there, but they absolutely went nuts over my machine. I, I had them crawling all over the windows, and it was there for quite a while. Um, but I, I completely destroyed the nest. I absolutely wiped out the whole nest. I, I um, plowed it, and I ran backwards and forwards over it, and I got the spike, and I ran it through the ground loads and loads of times, and I completely destroyed the nest to the absolute best of my ability to make sure that nest wouldn't be there any longer. And then I went and drove about a mile away from the nest and spent the rest of the day working in another field. I got onto the phone and I told the people that I worked with what I'd done, what was there. And the guy who'd done the bailing, um, he happened to be back in the yard. And he said, oh, yeah, he um, noticed the wasp nest. He didn't realize it was that bad. So we kind of basically cordoned the area off um, and because it was this cloud of angry wasps running around. Went back the following day, and I went back to the field where the wasp nest was, and went back and had a look, and it was dead. There was not a single live wasp there anywhere. The whole lot was gone. But I drove a mile from that wasp nest, right? After completely, you know, I did completely obliterate their home, okay? We, we do have to bear that in mind. I did destroy their entire house um, and killed many of their brethren. And, but I drove a mile and I spent an hour working in another field and getting hotter and hotter and hotter because the load all I was in didn't have air conditioning and it was a really hot sunny day and a load all is nothing but a great, a great big glass box. I was sitting on top of an engine inside said great big glass box. This wasn't pleasant for me. So it was getting hotter and hotter and I was sweating and sweating and it was literally running off me and after an hour there were still wasps crawling all over my windscreen. They were still there. They were still crawling. Well, not just the windscreen, all the windows. There were still easily a couple hundred of them that I could see quite clearly on my machine after an hour of work, right? So I, I did pay the price for destroying this wasp nest. I ended up not being able to open my door safely for another hour on top of that. And I can tell you, I think I probably lost about a stone in weight just from sweat. It was quite hideous to behold. Um, and I imagine the smell associated with me would have been quite hideous to behold by the end of the day as well. I did manage, I did, did have a shower, but um, yeah, I, I felt sorry for the four, poor people that were in the supermarket because I had to go to the supermarket on the way home. I felt a little sorry for them. I really did. But yes, that was my encounter with the wasp nest in the middle of summer. So farming is great, yes? And farming it does have this kind of romanticized view of it, but... For those of you who would ever consider giving up everything you ever own in order to go and pursue the dream, just be aware that the reality sometimes is not everything you expect. Now, I'm not saying there are no rewards. There are lots of rewards to doing a job like that, to, to, to farming and like self-sustaining. Um, and the, the dream for a lot of people these days doesn't seem to be large-scale farming. The dream these days seems to be small-scale farming, kind of like what we're doing here. This is, this is more focused around people's dream for farming and agriculture going and getting a small holding like we got here a few cows a few chickens a little bit of land and a few old machines and potter around and do it like that and try and be kind of self-sufficient and um raise your own food that kind of thing so you're not you're not out to make a vast fortune you're not out to get huge machinery and things like that and it is a very very rewarding experience it can be a hugely rewarding experience but the fact of the matter is a lot of people that embark on this don't realize quite what they're getting themselves into and they give up fairly early on because the reality is so much different than the dream if you have a dream like that it's wonderful it's amazing it's awesome but know the reality of your dream before you commit to it and it, i mean that's the same for so many other things and like my dream for many years was to be a farmer and then after a while i they, you know, working farms I, I kind of gave up on that dream and i didn't really have one for a very very long time and then several years ago um, I, you no, know, my dream sort of became I wanted to be a YouTuber. That's what I wanted. I, it's about, it's, I think it was about seven years ago now. I decided that I wanted to be a full-time YouTuber, play computer games for a living, 
And now I'm actually living the dream. I'm a full-time YouTuber. This is my only job. I don't have any other job now. This is all I do. And the reality is somewhat different to the dream. There are a lot of little bits and pieces behind the scenes that go on that most people just don't realize about. And it's, it is more difficult than most people realize. It is considerably more difficult than most people realize. Um, don't get me wrong, it is incredibly rewarding. But there is a lot more to it than most people think. Same as the, the whole farming thing, the whole self-sufficient farming thing. And it's those bits of reality that you get so many people that start a YouTube channel and then give up after a while because they just can't actually, they can't go through with it. They, they can't follow through with the dream. That the, the actual reality is so far removed from their dream that they're unable to continue with it because it's not what they actually thought it was. Um, so yeah, there's challenges and um, challenges and reality for so many things are generally quite a bit different to a lot of other, to, to, yeah, the, the challenges and realities of your dreams generally quite different to um, the dreams themselves. And everybody's got dreams. Every, everybody has dreams of one thing or another. Even if it's just a dream of a cup of hot chocolate. But you've always got to sort of keep in mind that the dream may not necessarily match up, to, the reality may not necessarily match up to the dream. Um, you know that they say that looking forward to something is um, often better than actually doing the thing itself. You know, you've... Something like uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they want to go to Disneyland. Personally, the, the idea of going to Disneyland just horrifies me. It's um, like full of organized fun. And that's, uh, yeah, I, I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like the massive crowds and so on and so forth. So it's not really something that appeals to me. But I know it's a lot of people that think that Disneyland is just like the, the, the be all and end all. And they get there. And the reality is that you spend half of your day waiting in queues to go on rides that you could actually go on in your local theme park that aren't a lot different, you know. I know that there is certain aspects of the experience that are really, really good, that's really, really awesome, but the reality is not necessarily as good as the, you know, waiting for it to happen. You know, you, as you're waiting for it to happen, anything could happen when you get to Disneyland, and then when you get there, you actually find out that, well, Mickey is kind of um, feeling quite unwell, so he hasn't come to the show today, and... Um, Minnie's not looking at best, and yeah, and then you had to wait four hours in line to get on a ride, only to find out that it wasn't working properly and there was water on the seat, which quite possibly may not have been water because it wasn't raining and there was a small child in the seat just before you got there. Um, so yes, yeah, so the reality can sometimes be not quite what you were hoping it could be, and it's, that is that is the very real thing with farming. I've I've met so many people that have like started out with the dream of, you know, and they've tried to follow the dream of self-sufficiency. I'm going to do self-sufficient this and, and we're going to um, go farming because it's going to be really good and we're going to have our sheep and we're going to look after them and they're going to just come when we call them and that's going to be it. The reality of it is, you know, your sheep may come when you rattle the bucket. Um, they may also get overly, you know, if you get like familiar with your sheep, they can get quite aggressive with you and they can butt you and um, knock you over to get corn and stuff. They don't really care. Um, and then, of course, you've got the other side of looking after the sheep where, you know, you get foot rot and things like that. So, you know, their feet go rotten and stinking and it's absolutely disgustingly awful and um, genuinely makes you feel quite sick. Just the smell of it. And you've, you've got to trim all the rotten hoof off and deal with that. And people don't really sort of get that that is part of the reality of um, like looking after these animals. The you know, animals get sick and things go wrong and it's, it's really, really unpleasant. Uh, it's, it's a very romantic idea, having a cow and going out and milking it in the morning. The idea of squatting down next to your cow and then having her do that because she doesn't want to get milked. And then you find a way to keep her stood up, which you, you, you basically use a, a, a rope so that she can't lie down. So then she'll sit there and she uh, gets a nice wet poo all over her tail having she you know she's been out on some fresh grass so it's it's very very runny she puts out on her tail she squirts it all down all over her tail you're sat down in here milking a cow by hand you know in the romantic way that her old farmers of old used to do she takes said towel and she will slap it across your face said towel said tail slap it across your face um that's not romantic it doesn't matter how you look at it Having an anointed tail slapped across your face several times is anything but romantic. And then it will usually splash into the milk bucket as well. And then you choose. Do you have flavoured milk or do you just chuck it away and come back the next day um, a little bit more prepared and a little less likely to put up with nonsense from Daisy?
uh, yeah, that's that is that is kind of the reality of farming. That's that's the sort of thing that can happen, right? We had big tomatoes on these plants yesterday. Do we have any big tomatoes here today? Nothing has ripened yet. They they do they they're, they're starting to get the earliest slight blush of red upon their skins. It's not going to be long. We're going to have a lot of tomatoes here. I'm thinking that we're going to be having to make something with these tomatoes. We've got so many of them here. I think we're going to have to make something with them. We're going to have to chop it all up and um. I don't know, pickle them or something. Do people pickle tomatoes? I don't really know. What do people do with tomatoes, other than making, like, tomato sauce or tomato soup or something like that? I genuinely have no idea. Right. We have sold a load of canola, and we have uh, spent another night. So we've got 24,000 euros and 43,000 social points. I wanted to find out if in the... Ooh, now we're talking. Right, we got fix one of the buildings. Fix one of the buildings. Fix one of the buildings. Plow the field. That plow the field is right next door to us. I reckon it'd be that field right there. Um, that's it. Okay, so we've got to fix the building quests. Now, the nearest bus station is there, and we've got to run all the way up there. We can't, can we, we can't double click and get there. I've, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to... Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. Terribly sorry. Uh, we're going to have to go and we'll get into our truck, and we will go running up and get one of these quests. Just one, and we will go and fix a building. There's the building material store. We haven't actually been in and had a look at that store yet. We must do that. That is on my to-do list. I definitely want to do that right now. I need to go I'm up here. I want to go, actually it's just over there and then up to those buildings over there. That is where we need to go. We get our quest and we can fix the building. Now we should, in theory, be able to get the quest because it's showing up on the map and our condition is good. Sleep condition is good and food condition is good as well. Quests do not show up now unless you are above 50% on both of your conditions. So our conditions, we, well, we, we could do with a little bit more um, food. So let's let's eat an egg. And another, another, there we go, 97. So we're looking pretty swish now. So let's have a look. We've got Joseph over there. There we go. Henry. Henry has some, Henry, um, you got some strange stuff going on, dude. What's the matter with you? Hi. <laughs> oh, it's you again. Yeah, it's me again. What do you want? Uh, looking for work. Got anything for me? Uh, that's I'm what we want. I'm looking for work. Got anything for me? That's the quest. That's the question we need. The building on my farm needs some care. What do you think? Oh, I reckon I could help you out. I like your shirt, mate. Your um, your, your green checkered shirt. I, I'm, I personally, I favour green over the red. I, I would never choose to wear red. Um, this, this, my wife maybe put this on. Um, don't Sounds ask. Long good. story. I'll take care of this. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. If anybody is going to be giving us a package, it should be him. He's the one that should be giving us a package. I mean, look, I mean, he's, he's got he's got the dapper suit. Uh, the shirt kind of doesn't really go with the suit, but it's the shades as well. He's got the shades and he's got the dapper suit. He's the one that should be giving us the package. I've got the package. Here's the package. Take it and get rid of it right now. Now then, we need to repair this building right here. So uh, let's go. I don't want that. And I reduce the sensitivity slightly. So now I don't just want, it won't just do like one click through on a roll um, on, on my mouse, which is a little bit weird. It's not working quite right. But we can do this. We can repair that one. And I'm going to do this one properly, I think, today. We're going to put out scaffolding and everything for the upper levels. Because why not? We haven't done that for a little while, actually. So I figure that we may as well do that today. So we'll come over here and we get this one down here. So we can do repair all of those bricks around there. We've got that up there. That's going to have to be scaffold. We can't do that. We've got to go up there and we've got to do scaffolding with that one. So we can repair these bricks around here. That is nice and easy. Okay. And I'm going to do the scaffold around this side a minute. There we go. So I'll put that one there. That'll reach there. And then we want to go... Right, so we've got... Yeah, we, we've got that one there that needs to go up. And... Ooh. It's not going to let me reach over that far. Let's put this one down here. Is it... Yes, we can get through. Excellent. The scaffolding is in the right place. Excellent. That is what we want. So then if I look... All right, I do need another one there. So that one can reach that end piece. And we don't need one over this side. We are going to need some here. But if I go through here first and we repair the lower walls... Then we'll put more scaffolding up to reach those upper levels up there. So we'll come down through here. And we got that one there to do. I think that's it. I think that's everything. And what about down this end? Right, there's nothing on this end, so I just need to go back to that one. I want one there for that bit. 
And what we'll do is we'll run a line down through here like this. Put those on. Um, actually, I'm just going to join that one in there. So it, it's we've got a wrap around. Basically, what we're doing, doing a full wrap around. So I'll go up here and I'll use this one just to repair just this wall over here on this bit. I'm not going to worry about the roof over here. So if I do that over there, I can, I'm just going to have to lean out over here. So it's not the safest. We should be putting scaffolding down there as well. But um, beggars can't be choosers. So we'll put that one on there. And do I do the roof from down here? I'm going to do some of this roof from down here. We'll, we'll do this section here. Now, people have told me that those boards on the roofs, they could actually be a thing. Um, they do sometimes put boards like that on roofs in areas where you get a lot of snow because it can stop the snow from sliding off the roofs so much. And it could also be preparation for putting sheets of galvanize on. Although, i got to be honest, if I was putting sheets of galvanize on a roof, I would be putting a bit more than just those two boards up for nailing the galvanize onto. You, you would have uh, several more bits to nail the galvanize sheets onto. Um, but the snow thing, that did interest me. I was that I did find that quite interesting, that idea that um, maybe it's for uh, heavy snow, and, and it is actually a thing. I've got, obviously, I went and looked that up, and yes, it's definitely a thing. Um, you get heavy snow in certain areas. You would want to be able to protect your um, buildings from having the snow like sliding off the roof all in one huge, great big lump, because it can actually be quite dangerous if you get enough of it. Um, and so they put these boards across in order to try and protect a little bit against it. Uh, it's not foolproof, but yeah, it, it, it'll help. So we just do that one there, like that. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to come down this end. And we're going to go up here. And we're going to go right onto the roof. And we'll fix the rest of this from the actual roof properly. So if we do this piece here. And I don't know if there's anything inside the building that we're going to have to do. But we've definitely got a couple more bits on the roof up here that need to be done. So we can fix that through there. Excellent. Right, that's all of that side done. And then down this side, we've got to do the whole roof on this side as well. So we'll start on this end. We get that done there. And renew all the gable end, everything. A whole lot. Looking good. So yeah, I'm assuming that the, the from what I've sort of been looking at, um, the snow thing seems to make the most sense. Because if you were if this was for galvanized, you wouldn't be using boards that big. And you wouldn't be leaving such big gaps in between them either. Um, I mean, it could just be to, like um, like I've said before, to try and stop the wind from blowing everything away. Um, because, I mean, I have that on my shed roof, but it's these sideways boards. That su suggests to me that it's not for stopping that. Because if you uh, want to stop the wind from blowing it away, you would just put some bits of batten down, like that one there. You've got that piece of batten right there, and uh, another one over there. But you would put those running up and down the roof all the way across, and that was what would be holding it in place. And if it was galvanized, if it was for galvanized, you would be putting these bits of batten across sideways, and you would put them the full length without any breaks in them. So the snow thing seems to me to be the strongest argument here for this. And I've looked at it, and I've carefully considered it. I've considered various arguments that people gave for their, um, different solutions as to why we might be putting these boards up. And to me, the snow thing is the one that makes the most sense out of all the possible uh, suggestions that I was given for it. So, yeah, thank you very much to everybody who, last time I was talking about this, um, gave me their various ideas as to why we've got the different things. Um... I think the snow thing is almost certainly the, the most accurate one. And then, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. As you know, I do like to make sure that I get all of my information accurate. If I'm telling you something, I like to make sure I'm telling you a truth rather than just something that is you know, absolutely nowhere near resembling truth. Um, and I will always do my best to research what I tell you. And if I say something and somebody says, oh, no, you got that wrong, it's actually this, this or this... I do go and look it up. That is one thing I will do. I always go and look it up and I make sure and then I can come back and I can either say, yes, you're right, I was wrong or, well, unfortunately, no, it is it's actually like this. You can, here, here's my references. Um, that's just how I like to do things. I, I just like to, I like, I like to be accurate with these things. Right, we'll do that. We'll go over and we'll see him again. Mr. Shades with his here's cool green shirt. Go on. There we go. Nice! 820 euros and 1,640 social points. It would appear that repair jobs are rather lucrative little numbers. So we're going to go over and we're going to try and fix that building over there next. We're going to go over there. Um, so what do we got? We got 25,000 euros and 45,000 social points. 
That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. So we'll just jump into the pickup here and we will head off. We want to go just to the, it's to the next farm over that we want to go to. Now, where is the builder's... Uh, not the merchant, the, the builder's merchant. It's the, the farm. I can't remember how much that new tractor was. I think that new one was like 38,000 euros. Um, but then, of course, we'd have to buy the plow after we bought that one. So that, that does kind of hold things back a bit. Oh, I've really got the hiccups today. I get hiccups quite frequently. You've probably noticed this. Um, and I, I'm never quite sure why. It's probably it's probably on account of me talking so much. Um, it's, it's probably got something to do with the fact that I talk so much. We're not actually going to go and do this quest today. We're just going to go up here ready to start the quest. So if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.